Hello, my name is Kang. I have yin yang eyes that allow me to see things that most people cannot. I saw the ghost of a child at the crossroads that day. He just sat there, oblivious to the passing traffic. The boy's body and face were covered in wounds. He looked so pitiful. I guess he died in a car accident. He still didn't seem to realize he was dead, but just stood there and watched the traffic go by. There were so many bloodstains on the road where the child was standing if you look closely. I couldn't explain why, but all I wanted to do was help him. However, I couldn't communicate with him. I needed to find someone to assist me. Mr. Zhu was the person who could assist me. I took a taxi to his house. Mr. Zhu was very nice to me and always agreed to use his talents for good. When I told Mr. Zhu about the child I saw at the crossroads, he immediately said, It's a soul trapped in the ground. I was surprised by the phrase, trapped soul. It was the first time I'd heard about it and had no idea what soul trapped in the ground meant. Simply put, when a person dies, his or her soul is imprisoned in that location, unable to leave. He was drinking tea and explained it to me. He added, If he wants to be free, he needs a family member to call his name and leads him out of the place where he died. This is known as soul summoning. The phrase soul summoning surprised me also. Mr. Zhu took a sip of tea and stated that many people who died were unaware that they were dead, that their souls were barely conscious, and that they frequently wandered in the same place. That was why people burned paper at the scene of an accident. They would always wander there if no family members came for them. According to Mr. Zhu, the boy had no family to summon his soul, and he was stuck there. I wanted to help him. But I didn't know how to find the child's family or perhaps I just contacted the police or asked around. Mr. Zhu drank up the tea and reminded me that I could ask the police officers whom I knew for assistance and taught me the method of soul summoning before leaving. I didn't think twice. I made a phone call to Jiro, a police officer. After leaving Mr. Zhu's house and briefly explained what had happened, Mr. Zhu was correct. After a few phone calls, Jiro found the boy's home address. I went to the address given to me by Jiro and found the boy's home. I was considering how to inform his family about this along the way so that there would be no misunderstandings. I couldn't think of a nice word after considering everything. For about 10 minutes, I stood in front of the boy's house. Finally, I knocked and got ready to tell the truth. I knew I had found the right home when the person who opened the door was a woman in her thirties with a very sad face. Despite my mental preparation, I hesitated when the woman asked where I was from. I did not respond to her main question, but I said that I had seen her son. She was surprised, as I expected. But she didn't think I was crazy and invited me in. Her husband also came out and they invited me to sit down. I noticed a picture on the table. The boy in the picture was the same one I saw at the crossroads. After I sat down, the woman asked where I had seen her son and how he was doing. She appeared to be aware of something. I briefly mentioned my ability to see ghosts, and then I told them about the boy I saw at the crossroads. The mother covered her mouth with her hand and tears flowed when she heard what I said. However, the father calmly told me about his son. The kid's name was Peng, and he joined the school's basketball team just a week ago. Peng's mother also took him to a sportswear store to purchase basketballs. Peng tripped, the basketball rolled down the street, and he chased after it. Peng ran out in the middle of the road and because the incident happened so quickly that she didn't have time to stop him. And the horrible accident happened right in front of her eyes. Peng's father held back tears as he told the entire story while Peng's mother sobbed. Several days after his death, Peng's mother had recurring dreams in which Peng was standing in the dark and asked her to find him. Peng appeared to be in a bad mood as he claimed he had no idea where he was. 
He was freezing, hot and lonely. Peng's mother woke frequently and cried even while sleeping. As a result, when I mentioned meeting Peng, they were unsurprised. I told them about Peng's situation and Mr. Zhu's treatment method. They agreed to use that method to get Peng back. Mr. Zhu provided me the tools I needed for soul summoning, and when I left his house he gave me two bells and a piece of red gauze. I asked Peng's mother to cut on her finger and take some blood according to that method. That was referred to as a blood connection, and a bell dripping blood can lead Peng home. Everything was in order. I stayed at Peng's house until 12 o'clock at which point we hailed the cab and drove straight to the intersection where Peng was discovered. Mr. Zhu advised soul callers to cover their eyes with red gauze from beginning to end because some people with special abilities will see other things during the process. We quickly exited the car at the intersection and Peng's father assisted Peng's mother to the center of the intersection. Peng's parents were still obsessed by the accident and had no return to the intersection since. Peng's mother couldn't help but tremble and cry so I urged them to start summoning souls right away. As I spoke, Peng's mother shook the bell in her hand, calling Peng every nine steps to come home with her. I removed my glasses as I heard her voice choked on the gloomy night. The mother kept repeating herself, Peng, Peng return home with me. Peng's father and I followed her for a short distance. The first was to ensure Peng's mother's safety and the second was to show her the way. In this way, it aided Peng in leaving that place of soul lockedness and returning home. Mr. Zhu instructed me to draw a circle at Peng's feet. Mr. Zhu explained that this was done to keep other children from causing problems in their home. Peng's mother suddenly inquired if she could see Peng again. I really wanted to help her see the child again, but I couldn't. All I could do was tell her that Peng was standing in the circle right now and she rushed over after hearing me say that. I was not sure how she could see Peng at that moment or if it was just a coincidence. She was actually holding Peng in her arms. I think it was a mother's hunch. But just for a while, Mr. Zhu stated that after the spirits were summoned, they had to go where they needed to go. As I watched Peng vanish like dust in his mother's arms, I told them that Peng would no longer suffer that I had done what I should have done and turned to leave. The husband bowed to express his gratitude. I believe they could finally have peace of mind accepting the truth that their son had gone in peace. I felt like a superhero when I used my power to help others. It appeared that becoming a shaman was also very appealing. After experiencing the preceding events, I was extremely grateful to Mr. Zhu and greatly admired him. I became increasingly interested in what he said about yin and yang, so I bombarded him with questions about ghosts and gods. You should try this tea first because as a shaman you must know how to drink tea, Mr. Zhu said. I was not a tea person, but after I finished my cup, I inquired about the yin realm with Mr. Zhu. Mr. Zhu did not continue talking about it. Instead, he took a sip of his tea and announced that a customer was on his way. There was a knock on the door as soon as Mr. Zhu finished speaking. Mr. Zhu seemed to have anticipated a visitor and rose to open the door. A middle-aged man with a bald head led the way, followed by a strong man who appeared to be the bald man's bodyguard. I learned from their stories that the skin-headed Cheng owned a construction company and was very wealthy. He went to see Mr. Zhu this time because he needed assistance. He claimed that the mansion he had just purchased was haunted. He stated that when he was about to renovate the house, the workers informed him that there was a problem, but he assumed it was because they were requesting a price increase, so he ignored their words. So he didn't bother redecorating and simply moved in. Mr. Zhu listened to Mr. Cheng's story quietly. Mr. Zhu on the other hand asked Mr. Cheng to get right to the point 
As a result, Mr. Cheng began to speak about the strange events that occurred in that house. Mr. Cheng had recently lost his wife and was now living alone. But on his first night in the villa, he felt uncomfortable as if the room was extremely cold. This sensation caused him to toss not only from a sense of coldness but also from an unseen sense of oppression. He awoke with heavy, sleepy eyes. The sight in front of him startled him. He saw a female ghost in white dangling from the roof. The ghost charged at him with her hook-like fingers stretched out. Then two terrifying hands with long pointed claws charged at him. Mr. Cheng was strangled by a female ghost, and he desperately wanted to scream but couldn't. He was in panic, so he grabbed the talisman on the bedside table and threw it at the ghost. This talisman was extremely effective, knocking the ghost out of his body. He looked around the room, terrified, after the ghost had vanished. The ghost vanished and the room fell silent. He didn't want to stay at home for too long, so he checked in a hotel and asked Mr. Zhu's contact information for assistance. Mr. Zhu stood up after Mr. Cheng finished speaking and said he would come to his mansion to take a look. Mr. Zhu invited me to accompany him to gain more experience. We climbed into Mr. Cheng's luxury vehicle and the driver whisked us away to a fluent neighborhood where Mr. Cheng was living. It was a large mansion in the middle of a garden. Mr. Cheng invited us in. I was truly impressed by this villa. How much money do I need to save to be able to purchase it? Entering the mansion, Mr. Cheng closed the door and hid behind it, allowing Mr. Zhu to pass through. I followed closely behind, feeling a rush of cold air. Mr. Zhu looked around and then Mr. Cheng dared to enter and asked Mr. Zhu if he noticed anything wrong. Mr. Zhu did not respond but instead said to me, Kang, take off your glasses and look around to see if there's anything. Mr. Zhu was aware of my abilities, so I removed my glasses and looked around. I noticed a girl in white floating in the air in the corner of the house's roof. Mr. Zhu also appeared to have discovered the yin emitted by the ghost as he raised his head and spoke to the girl in white. He inquired of the girl as to why she was causing such a commotion here. The girl, who now had a terrifying expression on her face, turned and stared directly at Mr. Zhu. She claimed that the owner of this house murdered her and that she was seeking vengeance. She was a college student who had been involved with a rich man for a long time due to a frivolous greed, but she did not expect him to be a brute. Not only did he forbid her from contacting the outside world, but he also abused her after he drank alcohol and strangled her to death during an abuse. Hearing this, my heart skipped a beat, and I turned to face Mr. Cheng. Mr. Cheng denied killing the woman and asked Mr. Zhu to assist him in locating the previous owner of the house in order to put an end to this ordeal. Mr. Zhu stated that no one blamed him and requested Mr. Cheng to find the previous landlord. But Mr. Cheng stated that the landlord had been sentenced to death for bribery and corruption. Mr. Cheng held up the phone to show her a piece of news, which the ghost didn't believe. I also read in the news that this person abused his power and was subsequently convicted of doing wrong. For a while, the white-robed ghost stared blankly, blood and tears flowing from her eyes, and her face was no longer as fierce as it had been. She descended from above the roof. She asked Mr. Zhu what she should do after repeating the words, Dead? Dead. Mr. Zhu promised to send the girl wherever she needed to go. Mr. Zhu requested that I take the items he was carrying in the car, a wooden sword and a clay pot. Mr. Zhu put the clay pot upside down, brandished a wooden sword and muttered something in his mouth. It had got to be some sort of spell that saved the souls of the dead. Mr. Zhu held open after chanting and poked a hole in the bottom of the clay pot with a wooden sword. Then I noticed something amazing. The hole in the clay pot was emitting cold air and I could still hear the howls of ghosts and spirits. It was as if the black hole in the clay basin was linked to hell. 
Just as I was about to say something, the girl in the white transformed into a white light and was sucked into the black hole. The ghosts and howls vanished when the girl in white was sucked away. Mr. Zoo instructed me to handle the clay pot with care. It was now just an earthen pot with a hole in the bottom and fragments on the ground. When everything was finished, Mr. Cheng thanked Mr. Zhu and requested that the driver take Mr. Zhu and me home. I couldn't help but wonder what about the girl and white along the way. Mr. Zhu noticed my perplexity and stated that the girl and white had been transformed by resentment and her obsession with vengeance had deepened. For her, the only sense that can exist was vengeance, which was why she had no idea where to go. Mr. Zhu sighed, saying that ghosts, like humans, harbor hatred in their hearts and that even if they forget the appearance of the enemy, they couldn't give up hatred and were haunted and dominated by it. Mr. Zhu's emotions made me think that his life might be full of stories, and I even imagined him as a teacher. At the time, I was witness to a series of strange events that caused me to reflect on the world around me. In my spare time, I went to a lake near my house to unwind. There was no manager at this location, and there were frequently people fishing and swimming. When I arrived at the lake, there were some children playing and swimming in the water. I wore sunglasses every day and the world was the same color in my eyes. After a while, I got used to seeing those things, so I wanted to take off my sunglasses and enjoy the beauty. However, as soon as I removed my sunglasses, I noticed something that made me jump. Not far from the children, there was a half a person's head in the water. Looking closer, I realized it was a water ghost drowning in the lake. As I remembered Mr. Zhu telling me about the water ghost taking a substitute. The water ghost leaned quietly toward one of the children. That child was chosen as the target. It gave a creepy grin before diving into the water. I knew it was going to drag the target underwater, so I held at the kids to hurry to shore because there was danger in the water. But those kids didn't believe me. Because those kids were obstinate, I knelt to pick up a few stones from the ground. I hurled them at those children. I didn't mean to hurt them. All I wanted was to get the kids out of the lake as quickly as possible. And this really worked. The kids looked at me with hatred in their eyes. They were terrified and they all left. The kids turned to look at me and said, Huh? Looking handsome and tall, who would have thought he was crazy? Regardless of what a few children said, I turned my head and gazed into the water. The water ghost poked its head out of the water, angry eyes fixed on me. He eventually sank to the bottom and vanished. Mr. Zhu stated that the water ghost drew people to reincarnate earlier and that I ruined his good work in order to save people, but the monstrosity stayed with me. That day, I went to a public bath near my house. I went early in the morning because there were fewer people and the water was clean. I napped in the heated swimming pool, which was very pleasant. I was taking a dip in the hot pool, but the soles of my feet were getting cold. I couldn't rest because of the cold. I looked down at the pool. My breath was hot, nothing out of the ordinary. I was about to unwind and take a nap when I felt my ankle being dragged into the water by a powerful force. I slipped and sank into the pool completely defenseless. I could feel myself being drawn into the water. I opened my eyes, the water temperature was over 40 degrees. My eyes were very painful and I couldn't see a water ghost hugging my ankle. I didn't expect to see him here. I tried to get out of the water but he clung to me. He charged at me with a ferocious expression. I drank a few sips of hot water before kicking my feet to the bottom and jumping out of the water. I took a deep breath and looked down at the water wondering if he was still there. But the water in the pool was very clear. I could clearly see the bottom. There was nothing 
but me in the pool. I quickly changed into my clothes and exited the bathroom. I called Mr. Zhu but he was out of town and wouldn't be back for a few days. The water ghost would like to take me as his substitute. Over the phone Mr. Zhu showed me how to save my life. I returned home and went to the local grocery to get a large sheet of plastic. According to Mr. Zhu, I nailed it to the ceiling. Mr. Zhu asked me to nail the plastic sheet's corner to the wall. I was not sure what this was for, but Mr. Zhu said it was used to deal with water ghosts. That night, unable to sleep, I lied in bed staring at the plastic sheet on the roof. But it was still the same. I didn't remember when I fell asleep. I vaguely heard the sound of running water in the room because I didn't sleep well. The sound was coming from the roof, but the house I was living in never had a water leak so I opened my eyes to see what was watering. But my eyelids were heavy, and as I struggled to open my eyes I noticed water dripping on the roof's plastic sheet. I wanted to get up and check but my body wouldn't move at all. I think I was sleep deprived. The water ghost might have tracked me down. The sound of rushing water became increasingly louder. The plastic sheet on the roof quickly accumulated a large amount of water and a large hole fell. I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. All I could do was squint. The water in the plastic sheet gradually formed a shape resembling an enraged man. He tried to approach me but was stopped by the plastic sheet and was unable to do so. I could see him attempting to contact me. As the water level rose it got closer and closer to me. I knew it would be dangerous if it got too close to me and I was about to give up when a ray of sunlight hit my face. I sat up abruptly, looking up at the water phantom on the roof. However, the roof was nothing more than a plastic sheet. Mr. Zhu's method saved me, but it wasn't over yet. I quickly got up, dressed and went straight to the market. Following Mr. Zhu's advice, I purchased a big rooster. He stated that the water ghost had only four chances of catching a substitute and if he couldn't catch a replacement, he could be forced to stay in cold water forever. If the water ghost didn't die, I would be punished. The best way to avoid punishment was to find someone to die for me. Mr. Zhu's method was to use a rooster instead and I dripped my blood on the rooster. In this manner my yang energy transferred to the rooster, undetectable for the water ghost. I was convinced by Mr. Zhu's words, so I threw the rooster into the water. Perhaps because of the floating feathers the rooster did not immediately sink into the water, but floated to the surface, where a hand suddenly emerged from the water. The rooster dangled in the water. What I witnessed was truly shocking, and I felt grateful to know an expert like Mr. Zhu, who helped me escape danger. The rooster saved my life, and I vowed never to eat chicken again after that. But if it happened again, I would do the same.